Do you think fatty liver is just about having a little extra fat in your abdomen? Well, think again. It's a metabolic disaster unfolding inside your body, and it's linked with some serious health problems. Today, we're going deep inside the liver to expose the real mechanisms involved with fatty liver, the inflammation, the insulin resistance, and the potential for scarring and permanent damage to your liver. It's crucial information if you want to protect your liver and really reverse this process and improve your health. Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Taranella, and this channel is all about helping you improve and optimize your health. Today, we're looking at the question, what really happens with fatty liver? We'll draw on my 15 years of clinical knowledge and experience, plus some research to help answer this question. If you're liking this information and getting a lot out of it, please hit the like and subscribe to continue getting videos like this. Fatty liver disease or NAFLD is when excessive fat starts to accumulate in your liver cells and it's becoming incredibly common for this problem to see and I see it in my practice frequently. It's often linked with obesity and insulin resistance and sometimes people are not overweight but they just have unhealthy lifestyle. But it's not simply just a storage problem, it's a active process an active problem of damage to those tissues to those cells and fatty liver can progress to NASH which is a hepatitis phenomenon where there's inflammation occurring in the liver and this NASH involves damage to the liver cells and the surrounding tissue and that can lead to progression of your liver disease to fibrosis scarring and once you have that scarring present that's called cirrhosis and once you have cirrhosis, you're more prone to liver cancer and ultimately liver failure. So we need to find out why it's happening before it gets to that point, obviously, would be step one, right? But we also want to understand how to unravel it when it is happening. And we can imagine your liver is like a finely tuned engine when it's working at its prime. And fatty liver is kind of like pouring sugar or pouring some kind of chemical or problem stuff into the gas tank. That's going to gum up the engine and cause all kinds of problems in there. And so one of the mistakes I think that people make is that since it's so common, it's no big issue. It's maybe just a cosmetic thing. I'm carrying a little extra fat, so therefore my liver's fat. And it's actually worse than that. It's a silent disease that is in the early stages, maybe not having too much impact, but as it progresses, can have significant problems for your overall health, not just for your liver, but for other parts of your body as well. So step by step, we're going to go into some of the more detailed, minute mechanisms at play here with fatty liver. So the root cause of fatty liver is oftentimes, most commonly, insulin resistance. And we've talked about insulin resistance in the past, but insulin basically helps your cells in the liver and other cells, fats and muscle, uptake the glucose or carbohydrates that's coming in when you eat food and floats through the blood and gets to those tissues. With insulin resistance, those cells become less responsive to the insulin. And so your body has to increase the amount of insulin that it's producing. When it does that, that's good. It gets the blood sugar out of the blood. It gets the carbohydrates out of the blood. But certain tissues are more sensitive to the insulin than other tissues. So it doesn't get distributed throughout the whole body. Certain areas, like the liver, are more sensitive to that insulin. And so most of those carbohydrates predominantly go to the liver. This happens especially when you're consuming like sugary foods or drinks because it's coming in so quickly directly from the digestive tract right to the liver and it starts to convert these sugars, these carbohydrates into fat within the liver cells. And that's called de novo lipogenesis. In normal cases, the liver can handle this. It will package up the fat that it makes and send it out to the fat cells in a packaged lipoprotein called very low dense lipoprotein VLDL. But with fatty liver, this process becomes traffic jammed or you get a log jam. And so some of that fat gets stuck in the liver cells and the liver tissue. Because that excess fat is there, it can actually damage the liver cells through oxidative stress and the production of harmful free radicals, then is create inflammation. So now you have fat there and you've lit that fat on fire. So you have fuel plus the fire, and that process kind of snowballs on itself. So essentially, it's the inability to export the fat that then causes damage to the cells. The fat that lingers in the tissue damages the cells. 
That's the spark that lights the inflammatory process. And once that inflammation is lit, it kind of progresses or keeps that process going of simple fatty liver or simple accumulation of fatty liver to inflammation in the liver and accumulation of more fat along with the inflammation. And sometimes too, there's other mechanisms involved outside of this. So sometimes there's also an imbalance in the gut microbiome, and that could be you know, associated with the same foods that are coming into the liver so quickly, the insulin resistance patterns. Well, the microbes in our gut are also affected by those foods. And when we have more gram-negative bacteria or other harmful bacteria, they can produce toxins that can get into the bloodstream and get into the liver from the bloodstream and also light that fire because, again, that's those free radicals damaging liver tissue and also promoting the logjam or interfering with the export of the fat from the liver because things are not working as smoothly as they should. There's also overlap with mitochondrial issues, and mitochondria are the area of our bodies that take fat and take carbohydrates and burn them as fuel, which turn into energy. But if we have a mitochondria that's not working, the furnace isn't going to be burning this fuel, and then you're also getting that backlog of fat or other carbohydrates in the liver and other tissues. And so that's another area to look when you're having ongoing fatty liver without any real known cause. But it's oftentimes multiple things at play here. In addition, there's also certain genetic predispositions that can increase the susceptibility to fatty liver as well. So hopefully that gives you the information or clues that fatty liver isn't just about accumulation of fat or excess calories. It's a complex interplay of insulin resistance, the de novo lipogenesis, the export of the fat, or lack thereof, the damage that the fat occurs, or other things that are coming in to inflame the liver, like dysbiosis or other toxins, and sometimes in interplay with some unique genetic susceptibilities as well. And so because there's so many different things involved with this, there's not one pill that you can use or one treatment that you can use to resolve your fatty liver. It's going to be unique to each person, Sometimes you have to layer multiple things, but for sure dietary things are really important and helpful and with that, of course, weight loss too. And so you don't necessarily need to lose 100 pounds if you're really overweight. Sometimes just a modest reduction in the percentage of weight, like 5 or 10% can make a big difference and significantly improve how well your body is able to export those extra calories out of the liver. Medications can also be really important in terms of how much insulin your body needs to produce to get those carbohydrates from your food out of the blood and into your tissues. And so that's where some of the diabetes medications come into play. Metformin is one that sometimes can be helpful for people that have diabetes, of course, but even if you don't, if you just have fatty liver, it can improve the insulin sensitivity or at least help reduce the blood sugar in your body. That's not typically my first option, for this, but other medications like pioglitazone, also known as Actos, can really be helpful at improving the insulin sensitivity. And so your body doesn't need to produce as much insulin to get the same job done with something like Actos. Vitamin E is also really important. I wouldn't recommend just going out and taking a bunch of vitamin E without talking to your doctor, but around 800 international units of vitamin E can be really helpful at quenching the oxidative stress in the fat tissue surrounding where those lipids are being deposited and quenching some of the oxidative stress there. When you do that, that fire or damage that's there isn't going to necessarily spread and potentially it's like putting out the fire with a little extra vitamin E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant for fat specifically. And again, I would be careful and cautious about taking vitamin E, but it can be helpful and I'll put a link to one that we use in the description. GLP-1 receptor agonists, these are the blockbuster medications like Ozempic and Monjoro are the brand names for semaglutide and terzepatide. And these medications can be really helpful in more severe cases of diabetes. But when you have fatty liver going on, again, it's that insulin resistance. It's the need for more insulin to get the job done that's causing the increased fat accumulation in the liver. And so by sensitizing the cells and tissues to the insulin, we need less insulin so that the export of fat can happen in a more efficient way and there's less going to the liver. It can go to other tissues as well. These medications also are going to help you get a better handle on diet and cravings and reducing the carbohydrates that are going to cause problems. 
Of course, they do oftentimes lead to weight loss as well, which can directly impact and improve your liver. There is emerging research too on these medications and directly reducing the inflammation in the liver, which isn't surprising given the connections of the mechanisms that we've already discussed. There are other medications to consider with this as well, but let's move on to some of the specific dietary changes that you can make to really improve your liver health. So fructose is the main one that you basically want to get out of your diet completely, even if it comes in the form of fruit. Now you may want to do a stepwise approach where you cut out sugar first, including soda, and you replace it with fruits. And then the next step would be to cut out the fruit as well. But long-term, fructose is not good for your liver. You also want to reduce the overall carbohydrate load in your body. So that's going to include white rice and pasta and bread and things like that. Now you do need some carbohydrates, so I usually recommend my patients to reduce it to around 100 net grams per day. And that's going to vary based on your size. That's based on roughly someone that's 175 pounds. And so when you reduce some of these foods, you naturally need to increase other things. So what are you going to increase? Well, healthy fats like avocados, nuts, fish, chicken, turkey, all these things are fair game and going to be helpful. A little bit of fruit, maybe not the worst thing. You want to adopt kind of like a low carb Mediterranean style of eating. And exercise here is going to be really helpful too, because you're going to be burning some of those calories, which is going to help get rid of some of that glucose that's coming in from your gut. And it's also going to sensitize the cells, the tissues of your muscles to insulin, which is going to help unravel this process. There's a few supplements that are helpful when you have fatty liver too. I would say milk thistle and glutathione are really important here. Omega-3 fatty acids also pretty important. And as we mentioned, vitamin E. So the other thing I wanted to make a note of here is that we do have a playlist on liver health, liver function, high liver enzymes, and it goes into different ways to troubleshoot and understand what's going on in your body when you have different scenarios going on. All right, so now we got some of those details hammered out. Here's the key takeaways that I think are important. Fatty liver isn't just about excess fat accumulation in your body. It's a lot more nuanced than that. Insulin resistance is definitely at the root cause of fatty liver disease, and it is something that you can take a hold of and actually reverse with the right approach. And that is helping with the fat export out of the liver, which means less coming into the liver. That also means putting out the fire in the liver when it's present. Sometimes looking at gut issues in the microbiome can be a key player there. Lifestyle factors like weight loss and exercise are obviously going to be important for helping improve the insulin sensitivity and helping unravel this process as well. So keep in mind, this is definitely a serious condition when you have fatty liver and especially when it's NASH or the elevated liver enzymes in addition to the fatty liver. It's more detrimental to your body. That's stage two fatty liver disease. But oftentimes these things are reversible even when you do have stage two but it does require persistence and the right approach to reverse it. So hopefully this helps you better understand what's really happening when you have fatty liver disease. If you have questions, definitely drop them in the comment section. Happy to answer your questions. If you do want a more nuanced, customized answer and more direct access to me, consider joining the membership program. We'll also be supporting the work that I do and the channel in general. Now, one question you might have after watching this video is, what are the stages of fatty liver disease? And you can find the answer to that question in this video right here.